Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Newbie and the Doobie. My name is Timmy, I am the newbie. Mary Jane, I am the doobie. Today is Cotton Candy Day. That's right, it is. <laughs> I, f- I feel really bad because um, I kind of ate the cotton candy. Uh, but you don't have to feel bad. <laughs> unlike, no, it, unlike the day that you ate the cookies. Well, no, well, you I ate, the, ate cookies. the cookies. We don't have to worry about what, what was fact and what was not. But I actually am not a fan of cotton candy. Okay. So I don't even, it doesn't even matter well, to you, me. You would not have eaten this cotton candy. I wouldn't have eaten this cotton candy? No. And it's funny you said you shouldn't feel bad that you ate the cotton candy because it was because I was feeling bad that I ate the cotton candy. It was infused cotton candy. Oh. Cotton candy. Um, I... I I never even thought of all the things that I've heard that have been infused. I have, I have never come across cotton candy infused cotton candy until you are now discussing it. So it was actually part of our gift bag when we had gone to the um, Oneida okay um, event that we had done out there at the uh, cannabis store there. Okay, let me just make a note. Okay. So as the newbie and doobie, we go to events. Um, we hosted that event and did some mm-hmm. interviews live mm-hmm. on stage. That was a fun event. Shameless plug. Bring us to your event. Anyways, um, we get these gift bags every yes. time we go to events. Yes. And it's so funny because I am. Well, we get one of two things. We either you get a gift bag and I get a gift bag. Mm-hmm. Talk about this scenario because this is what you're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the other scenario after. Oh, see, okay, all right. So let's let's go back. So that scenario where we each get a gift bag, they're usually the same gift bag, but I'm a non-consumer, so I've got this bag full of stuff that I'm not going to use. So then she gets. Double, I get double. double I, I'm not complaining. I like I like when and I get double. And I'm not complaining either. If we come to your event, please give us each a gift bag. Or th- this is what happens. The second scenario happens, <laughs> which I'm not a fan of <laughs> because I don't get double. Because they look at you and you're like, oh, he's a non-consumer, right, right. So, so he's the, not going to use any of this stuff. It was the like, there's like, yeah, here's for the doobie. And I'm like, but no, like the doobie, I do need a lot. I'm just I still want a gift bag. I still want a gift bag. Um, but that, I that cotton candy was delicious. And I nibbled on it a little bit at a time every night before bed to help me sleep. So thank you. I am, I am waiting, though, for the day that um, we get a gift bag with... With just CBD stuff for you. Yeah. That would just, be awesome. Where somebody, where somebody goes... Hmm. Let's do something different. Like, for what the would newbie. the newbie like? Yeah. Yeah. That like, he what, could use. what would the newbie like? Like, I don't mind like t-shirts. I got, I got hats and yeah. some t-shirts. Yeah. By the way, I'm a small because I like to show off my yoga shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um. And oh, I got, I the, we got this rolling tray. Oh yes. Yeah. From leafy, leafy things. things. I even kept one of those because it's a super cool wood board. You're going to use it for charcuterie, aren't you? I might might just use it for charcuterie. (laughs) I love my charcuterie. Well, and also um, anything extra that we get because, like, obviously I'm not – I can't use all of it. Um, We do giveaways. We give things to people. We – you know, whether it be our friends or fans or – Or our enemies. Sometimes to make – That's the stuff we really don't like. If you give – if you're nice to your enemies, it's like pouring hot coals upon on their head. Actually, I think I uh, it's up. the kill them with kindness. Same principle. That's what Jackie does all the time. All right. Jackie Childs. I love... Uh, She's killed so many people with kindness, she should be in happy prison by now. Yeah, some, I think somebody like <laughs> slammed her for something or other, and what did she do? She went on Buddy's um, GoFundMe page for his dog that needed some sort of therapy, and she donated. Right. Killed them with kindness, everybody. Yeah. So we're at this event. Yes. And... Where does the cotton candy now come into the story? It was in the gift bag. I'm confused. Where does the cotton oh. candy come into the story? Oh, it was. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm running out. So he was in the cotton. So you. It was in the. It gift was bag. infused. Yes. The story is. Which my is why shirt. I never saw any. The, of the story cotton candy. is my shirt. Cannabis is safer than pharma. So this is part of the um, safer than series. Okay. Uh, there's a gentleman who does, um, if you look up cannabis is safer, 
uh, it'll be like there's multiple things. Um, I have a uh, marijuana is safer than the police. Cannabis is safer than the and then alcohol it's safer than pharma. Um, just just basically trying to teach people that cannabis is not cotton candy is safer than hard candy. Oh, this is I would say yes, because you can choke on hard candy if it get lodged in the mm. back of your throat. You can't choke on cotton candy, I don't think. You can choke on anything if it goes down the wrong pipe. Fair enough. Including saliva. I don't like cotton candy. What don't you like about cotton candy? I can tell you exactly what it is. Is it like the about. texture? It's the fact. Okay. Well, you know. Remember when we did? Oh, remember when we did it's trimming? The stickiness. Remember when we do trimming and you handed me that branch? <laughs> as soon as you said, yeah. And I went to touch it and that stuff and it it wouldn't come off my fingers. That's what cotton. It's like people they grab it in, you pull it out, and you're like, oh, look at this nice little soft thing. And then it turns into like this monster. And you've always to, had a problem with stickiness. Just, just like, and the, like now you've got like your like this red stain on all your fingers, and you haven't even eaten anything yet, and you've got like like these little per pink hairs. And like like I pulled something this much out of the bag. Why are you eating that much? And a at second a time? later, well, you you have to grab this no, much. No, we need by to the time teach it you how to. shrinks and goes under my fingers, I have to go. You no, I will teach you how to eat cotton candy. It's in very very small pieces. But it's funny as you're telling this story about stuff on your hands, it made me remember the video you did with Taste a House. <laughs> Taste a House. <laughs> Sorry, Taste House. Um, yeah, with go the on cake, YouTube, Taste House. With the cake decorating. Yes. Um, Timmy did an excellent job at decorating this cake, As but usual. he did get a little bit of icing on his hands, and I know how he does not like to get messy. Even your mother told me that from like a, even a small, small, <laughs> even he's like, he never liked to get his that. hands dirty and messy. Thanks, mom. Which is funny because I, you don't look uncomfortable in the video. You look like you're super chill. Mm -hmm. But if you look at your hands, <laughs> they're covered in ice. They're like this. And I need constantly moving them. And I'm like, yeah, he wants to get that icing off his hands yeah. so bad. But for the, for the sake of the video. For comedy. You did not. It's a good video. You you definitely need to go check it out. Yeah, go to Taste House. I think it's called. I don't know. It's on Timmy. Timmy. Or don't you have it? No, I don't have it. Oh, you might be able to find it at uh, on UpstandingComedy.ca. I think if you go to the we're going to post a link. We'll find the link. We'll find it. But yes, it's at Taste House, spelled with a U, H A U S, and a video I did with. Uh, um, Melissa from uh, drawing a blank. Do we remember her Instagram? Oh, forgive us, Melissa. Sweet cakes. Sweet cakes. Anyways, um, but yes, you're you're right. I don't like the messiness on my hands. Um, last thing I would say about cotton candy, I have. Are you a um, grab it off, jump it in your mouth? Kind of thing, or the person who grabs it and then they they roll it up into the hard ball. I'm. I take very, very small pieces and, and the whole thing goes in the mouth. Okay. I don't want hard candy. I like to feel it dissolve. Yeah, I'm a see, texture Some people person. roll it up and make it into a hard candy. I never people do that, that with bread too. They make little, they, they tear that? all the, I had a friend who would tear all the crust off mm -hmm. and eat the crust and then take the ball. And, and I guarantee you, we have listeners that have done this and they make bread balls, one slice, two slice, and just eat it like that. Sounds like something you do in prison. Maybe yeah, actually, as a side note, just so you know, just bringing up the prison thing, <laughs> my uh, my middle daughter, um, we always thought that she would be the one out of all of our family. If we that got would arrested. end up in prison. No, not end up in prison, but survive in prison. Yeah. Oh. Because um, I thought you said she would end up in prison because she would just agree. Like, she, did you do oh, that? Oh no, yeah, she was very guilty at everything. We could we even could, when she wasn't guilty. Oh yeah, we could break her. We could break her instantly and make her confess to crimes that her other siblings have done easily. <laughs> I don't play those mental games with her anymore. But she would survive. She would survive, which is good because she had a tendency. Is she, you know, like a good interrogator, a bad interrogator could break her down qu pretty quickly. But she uh, she survived for years off of just bread and water. She would always just want bread, and she would drink water. She didn't drink pop. She didn't drink. She just wanted to drink bread and water. So I like, wonder if she made bread balls. Hmm. I'll ask her. Hey, you ready to get this thing rolling? Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I threw her off. She's like, "Get what?" You did rolling? throw me off because I was like, "Did we do birthdays?" Oh, never mind. She threw me off. 
We haven't done birthdays. Okay. Because I was I was like, wait, are we doing intro, yeah. outro, birthdays? We're doing birthdays. Okay. Well I My didn't even fault, I didn't even cross check these these birthdays. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, I did. I did. Sorry. I All apologize. Right. What do we got? Um I was I, I meant the ages, but we did cross check the ages. For some right. I suck at math. If anybody doesn't know, you've probably heard me say multiple times, I know weed math and that's not ages. Mm -hmm. I she, don't even know how old I am anymore. She taught me weed math. Yeah. So you know all episode. math. I'm good at all math. Yeah. So Timmy helped me figure this out. Uh, so for birthdays, we've got Aaron Carter, which Aaron is Carter Nick is, Carter's younger brother. And I don't know either of those Carters. Who are they? Uh, Nick Carter was the youngest member of Backstreet Boys. Oh, Backstreet Boys. Okay. Yes. It was one of those boy bands. Yes. Okay, and Aaron boys. Carter actually was a, a singer as well. He just started after his brother and just like... Um, so he's not, real, he's not a real singer. Just like the other Spears sister. Mm -hmm, yeah. It, when you have a, a more Lynn. famous... Exactly. When you have a more famous older sibling that hit the scene first, it's really, really hard to get your foot in there. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's also because they're not as talented. I don't know about that. Yeah, I think I've seen both of them. Not as talented. Okay. How old is he? Uh, he's turning 34. Which one? Aaron? Aaron. Okay, 34 yeah. Aaron. Okay, yep. happy birthday to Aaron. And then we've got Larry Bird. Larry Bird. I know Larry Bird. Musician. Just kidding. No. I know. Um, I was thinking of this. basketball player. Bird, Bird, Bird. Hall of Fame basketball player. Played yeah. for the Celtics. White guy. I don't know why that's surprising. Um, because... Because he uh, played for the Celtics. Well, actually, that's probably not surprising. No, but I mean, just it's just the common. I don't even know. I'm not even going to say that it's a. Uh, st well, they say stereotypes is based on um, a good a part of reality. That's why stereotypes come in. But the I fact think he is, was just tall. He was a tall white guy, but he was good. They say white men can't jump. I don't know I if think, Larry could jump, but he could shoot. I think Larry Bird might have been in um, the very first Space Jam as well. Oh, uh, probably. Yeah, he would have been. Right? Yeah. Jordan, Johnson, Bird. He could very well. Around be. that time he I played? Did, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Okay. Yeah, he was like. Because like I was right looking at his Jordan. age, right? And I'm thinking. How old is he today? He's 65. Oh, man. Make you feel old? No, but uh, I bet you. I, I would, I'm going to say this. There's no way to test it. Well, there is if you wanted to. I bet you Larry Bird could probably be at least at 65. A number five, like maybe, okay, maybe a number six, a sixth person off the bench on half of the NBA teams that are playing right now. That's how good he was. 65, you should just, just try for one year. Hmm. Try to be the sixth man off the bench. Doesn't need to be a starter, but I bet you he could still pull that off. That's how good he was. And then uh, very last birthday mm -hmm. is uh, one of my personal friends, um, mm. Todd Davis. Is celebrating a birthday today. Thirty-eight oh, happy birthday, Todd. I just want to point out, also a mini celebrity, played the role of Elf Number Three in the very first Santa Claus. So happy birthday, Todd. Well, I would like to throw in. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to throw these in. I would like to throw in a happy birthday to my oldest daughter, Jade. Oh, what? When is her birthday? Her birthday is a couple of days from now. Well, it depends on when you listen and watch this. But as of the launch, her birthday is two days from when this gets released. Happy birthday, Jade. Happy birthday to Jade. Shall we get this thing rolling? Oh, you know, I'm always ready for that. Roll it. It's time to find out what's been happening in the news. Italian dentist tries to dodge the COVID vaccine by using a fake rubber foam arm. <laughs> what a rookie. When I did that, I used a real human arm. Wait, what? Never mind. Homeowner tries to smoke out snakes. Instead, ends up burning down the house. The snakes all survived, went to the neighbor's house, this guy went over and asked if they wanted his help. Yeah, burning down the house. New York firefighters rescue a man stuck in the bathroom wall for several days. When asked why he was in there, the man simply replied, I thought this was Joel Osteen's church. Man builds wife replica Taj Mahal for their 27th wedding anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the most hated man in the world, 
Madhya Pradesh. Oh, you got me flowers? Madhya Pradesh got his wife a miniature Taj Mahal. Madhya Pradesh. Snowstorm leaves 31 people stranded at a Denmark IKEA. IKEA still refuses to publicly acknowledge their amazing, wonderfully elaborate labyrinth. It wasn't the snow. People get lost there all the time. I literally got lost there last time we were there. Goat steals papers from a government office in India. Government officials now are going to have to officially accept the goat ate my taxes as an acceptable reason for handing in your taxes late. It's a bad goat. <laughs> okay, that was a bad joke. <laughs> And that has been what's been happening in the news. Well, it is time for another word of the week. Mary Jane, what is the word? I am so excited for this word because I tried to tie it in with our theme of the week, which is cotton candy. Mm -hmm. The word of the week is pasties. <laughs> well... So the, the strippers things no. connected to no. somehow cotton no. candy. Maybe her name is Cotton Candy. No, that like, would be a good stripper name, actually. <laughs> so maybe, be, I, I see no, the connection now. It's it's like the pasties. Um, That's it's like I've got a case of the pasties. A case of the pasties. Okay. Yeah. So my first question is: if it's not a if it's not the stripper thing, what is it that connects it to cotton candy? Okay. So it's the alternate word, or what it's called, is cotton mouth. So like cotton, cotton candy, mouth. cotton mouth. Yes, which is also, I'm assuming, connected to dry mouth, which if you have watched all of our shows, if I've learned anything, it is that for all of the benefits of cannabis, it always comes down to, but two side effects, red eyes, dry mouth, or cotton mouth, or pasties, or pasties. as they say. I might be a little biased on all of the positives, but but there are two major negatives, yes. at least for me and most people that consume cannabis. Um, and the interesting thing about cotton mouth is that it does not matter if you smoke it, vape it, if you have oils or edibles, you still get the side effect cotton mouth. Okay, that's that's incredibly interesting to me because I would have thought that the consuming of cannabis by by smoking it that the inhaling of smoke like the uh, the combustion element okay would is what would cause the dryness i wouldn't think that taking like one of those little infused gummies would cause that same thing well i mean if you have your mouth open the entire time it would dry out yeah but i don't know anybody <laughs> who chews on a gummy no but when you smoke like you're taking air in your mouth, so I guess it would be drying it out. But it, unfortunately, it doesn't matter what way you consume cannabis, it is a side effect. So the can the cannabis plant in any form, red eyes, red eyes, pasties, and pasty mouth. Um, certain. Well, so I almost could try to combine some and certain together, okay. which is funny because, anyways, so certain strains actually can make pasty or cotton mouth worse. So right. um, you can learn which strains do that and try and avoid them, or you can follow these tips, which will help right. when it comes to avoiding, or I can't really say avoiding, just dealing with cotton mouth. Pasty tips. Pasty tips. Was that a sexual <laughs> reference? Nope. Go okay. ahead. Okay. So <laughs> you can stimulate the saliva glands. <laughs> stimulate. Okay. Sorry. Now I'm not. A, okay. Go ahead. You can do this. <laughs> You can do this a couple of ways yep. by staying hydrated. Yep. So lots of water, electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's funny to me because you consume cannabis regularly. I do. Um, all day long. Sure. And you are notorious for not drinking your water. That's so it's correct. like you. So you choose mm -hmm. to dwell with the pasties. Maybe I like it. <laughs> Maybe. I Maybe like I it. use one of these other tips. Okay. All right. That's okay. That's fair. I shouldn't have jumped in on that one. But I do notice that 
that you you don't drink a lot of water. So okay, so maybe maybe I've I noticed don't. one of the other ones. So you could also suck on suckers or chew gum. Okay, I don't see either of those. But the question would be because I haven't seen those is can you, Mary Jane? Absolutely. Done. Can you <laughs> Wait, smoke cannabis and chew gum at the same time? Sure. Wait, is that a challenge? Mm -hmm. It could be a challenge. In fact, it probably should be a challenge. But my thinking is, is that I don't know if, I don't know, just by the fact of smoking something and I've got gum in my mouth, uh, for me, I would be like thinking that the gum was going to inf get infused by all of the thing and then I would just taste cannabis. But you eat cannabis, so I guess... Maybe it's not a problem for you. So I definitely wouldn't want to inhale the gum because that would be choking. However, if Do you I had... believe that if gum goes in your stomach, it stays there for seven years and doesn't digest. No, but that's if it I goes in your lungs, you're, you're gone. Yeah, so so don't fact. put it in your lungs. Um, however, like I think if you had a piece of gum over on your cheek mm -hmm. and you were smoking, maybe you would get the flavor of the gum. And not oh, the gum taking the so you'd flavor be smoking. of the smoke. Okay. All right. I didn't see it that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay. So drink water, chew gum. Or suckers. Or suckers. Suck on suckers. Yep. Um, or have less caffeine because most people do not know that caffeine mm. is a diuretic. I believe that's what they call it. Either way, it will dehydrate you. It's not a hydrator. That is true. I actually learned that uh, true story. The we hard were at, way, didn't a, you? Well, I didn't. Someone else did. Well, that's I, what I meant the hard way because like... I learned the lesson the from ground. someone else learning the hard way. Um, we were at an all day, all day thing outside the entire time, hot day in the summer. Uh, they ended up fainting. Uh, paramedics even came. And of course, their first question was, did you stay hydrated? Were you drinking? Um, or did you stay hydrated? Because that, that's the main question. And... Uh, I think, I think there's an electrical <laughs> storm. Um, and they said, uh, yes, I've been drinking coffee all day long. Apparently that was when I learned that coffee does not hydrate. It simply dehydrates. So true yeah. story. Yeah. So if you follow those tips, that will help you, uh, avoid Pasting Avoid, it. but not get rid of. Yeah, I think it's just something I've sort of learned to live with, All right. to be honest. There you go. Like, clearly, I'm not drinking more water. How many sips have I had this entire... I don't think I've touched my cup. <laughs> There's not, not even water in these cups, simply. <laughs> no spit take today. Wait, say pasties. <laughs> no. Just do it. No. Do it because we're. No. Camera. People are watching. Go do it. They just say pasties. Say the word of the week is pasties. Go. Word of the week is pasties. And it is time for another high five list. High, high five. five. Today's high five list is connected to our theme of the day cotton candy or candy floss. I call it candy floss. In fact, right before we went to put this segment together, I mentioned to Mary Jane candy floss and she looked at me blankly. And then I said cotton candy. And then we realized they were the same thing. Now, one of the things that I discovered very early on here, which I knew, but I just needed to confirm, it was one of those things of going, wait a minute, hold on. And then you want to fact check it. Candy floss or cotton candy. Yes, cotton candy is made out of air and candy. No. Sugar. Sugar. That's it. Air sugar and sugar. And air. It literally, they are selling you air that is sweetened slightly. So it's like blown sugar? It's a ripoff of what it is. It's delicious if you ask me. I hate it. I hate it. I could have gone multiple ways with this list. You just don't like sticky fingers. I do not. And that's one of the ways I could have gone. I could have gone with the stickiest, most annoying things in the world. Candy floss. Uh, when you trim weed, uh, that that's one of the that worst. Is sticky. But I didn't want to go that route. And then I could have gone another negative route. And that was the most um, annoying or useless uh, snacks. <laughs> I would have gone that route because cotton candy is a the point... How does it go from this ball of air, sweetened air? By the way, the strands are thinner than human hair. 
And then the moment you touch it, it like shrinks down into this hard molten lava rock where it's like not hot, but it's just like, it just all of a sudden it solidifies and you're like trying to crunch. I don't know how it does that. Anyways, I'm not a scientist. Well, that's like asking how ice is solid. And then when you touch it, it goes liquid. No, it's not. Ice is cool. Cotton candy, not cool. So we try to stay positive on this show in general. So I didn't want to go those negative routes. I wanted to go the positive side. All right, Timmy, what do you got? So these are the top five most amazing things made with air. Okay. Now, for the record, I'm not talking about most useful, uh, like tires, for example. Mm -hmm. I've blown four tires over the last six months. I know they are useful. I know they're important. These are the top five most amazing things made with air. Now, honorable mention, we go to thunder sticks, which are plastic little things, and you bang them in stadiums, and it gets really loud. Okay. You don't know anything about those? Nope. Nope. I haven't been to many stadiums. Fair enough. To watch sports. Fair enough. We need to do that once... I don't know if some of you know, there's a pandemic going around. Um, and as well, um, on the honorable mention list, sex dolls. I don't know from personal experience, but they sell well. So probably, probably amazing. Who knows? You don't want to speak on that? I've sold a few in my day, so I can, <laughs> I can vouch for that. Okay, here we go. Number five on the list of most amazing things made with air. Whoopee cushions. Now. This one right here. Are you going to talk about my love of flatulence jokes? She will crack up at any flatulent, flatulent joke, fart jokes, uh, movies, uh, in real life, if there's a fart. <laughs> okay, my favorite scene in, in a movie, you know those um, sleep apnea machines? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the husband was on the phone and he says, oh, hang on. I think your mother's machine's up too high. I got to turn her down. You know how we knew? Because she was over there going. <gasps> <laughs> I was dying. Dying. See? If, you want, if you're looking for a gift to send MJ, a whoopee cushion with like a pot leaf drawn no, on it. No, no. A fart sound machine. <laughs> Even better. Even better. That's technology. But that's where we've gotten. Now we can make fart sounds with machines. But if we go way back, there was a Roman emperor who was no yes. How far back? To Roman, to em, to Rome. <laughs> to Roman, didn't you hear me? <laughs> Roman emperor who used to use what we, we would now see as a whoopee cushion okay. um, to uh, to get his uh, unsuspecting guests when they would come to the palace for dinner. Do you to, know what he used? I don't know what he used, but I know. For a fact, with a 10th century emir used. Emir? Amir. Is that his name? Um, Amir, no, that was his role. Oh. His name, That's and let's so give this guy credit. Amir. I was going to name my son Kamir. K-A-M-I-R. <laughs> Come here, And I was Kamir. told I wasn't allowed for that reason. <laughs> Come here, Come here. <laughs> That's funny. See? Fart jokes don't do it for me. My kid's dad like that didn't type think of joke does that. It was so, funny. <laughs> so a 10th century emir, uh, Zayadat Allah the oh. Third, enjoyed hiding inflated animal bladders under cushions of his palace. Yes. Now, for those of you listening, were they already inflated, or did he have to inflate them? No, no, you would have to inflate them. So you. who? First of all, let's let's put aside the animal bladder for a second. Who was the first person to really sit down and go, you know, we need a way to create fart sounds. That, no, that no, in was, and of itself. I bet you somebody said, you know what would be funny? Is if when the king sat down, <laughs> he farted. That would be funny. It was either that or they went, oh, what are we going to do with this part of the animal? Right? Yeah, it's like, it's like you know, you don't want to waste the animal. What's the it. best way to use an animal bladder? I know. Let's have it. We hide it under people's seats, and when they sit on it, it will sound like a fart noise. Here, blow some air in it first. <laughs> right? That would be Amir's bladder blower upper. Amir's job. Um, 
So he used that, but I just, I think that's so fascinating that all the, like fart jokes are not new. It's like historically from like funny. From Roman times. And up to 10th century and mirrors or mm. are behind. I don't know. I don't remember which one came first. <clears throat> Anyways, the modern rubber uh, one that we know mm -hmm. um, invented in the 1930s. Okay? okay. So we're, so not even a hundred years old in terms of the ones that we know. And once again, all great inventions come by mistake. They were trying to, they were just experimenting with scrap sheets of rubber, probably put a couple together, mm -hmm. accidentally made the sound. The company's owner, okay, goes to this guy who makes practical jokes. Now, practical joke stores and stuff like that, I mean, it's usually pretty uh -huh. cheesy jokes, right? Yeah. He goes to this guy, though, back in the 30s and says, hey, you should try this. That guy goes, too vulgar, nobody's going to buy it. So then he offers the idea to this other guy who it goes on to sell fantastic because that first guy was clearly wrong, probably went out of business. <laughs> he was the owner of the it store. But his last his last chance here was once he saw that it sold well, he released his own version of it and called it the Raspberry Cushion. That obviously didn't well. Should have taken the whoopee cushion. Missed out on a great opportunity. Number four on the top five most amazing things made with air, bouncy castles. I love a good bouncy castle. They are dangerous. Very dangerous. Especially on a windy day. You want to know how dangerous? I actually have that information. Ah, and, how many and, people died? And some of you are thinking, wait a minute. They all know. That's just, that's not a coincidence. Truly a coincidence. She does not know the stuff I prepared, just like I don't know the stuff she prepares. Um, I was not allowed to go on bounty castles, thank you very much, <laughs> because they are so dangerous. Okay. Now, according to Jim Barber... Spokesman for the National Association of Amusement Ride Safety Officials. Ooh. Apparently that's a job. He says this. There are prob they are probably, bouncy castles, the most dangerous amusement devices at amusement parks. You see more injuries on inflatables, including bouncy castles, than any other amusement ride you can think of. More than roller coasters. In 2010... As many as 31 U.S. children per day were treated for injuries sustained in a bounce house. 31 a day. Right. That's one child every 46 minutes in the United States of America gets injured in a bouncy house. <laughs> well, it's actually more because that's within a 24-hour period. Huh? The kids are sleeping. The park oh, is only okay. open. And, well, how many of those kids really are sneaking out at 3 in the morning? I would be sneaking out if I had a bouncy house. I'm just saying. And an estimi estimated, because they don't know the exact number, 65,000 children under 17. We're not talking adults, because I, I have taken over bouncy houses as an adult. I will push the children out and go enjoy the bouncy house. Under 17, 65,000 people were injured from 1990 to 2010. So in 20 years, okay, that means 3,000 people under the age of 17 were injured in bouncy houses a year. You know, I seen <laughs> one video one time of one bouncy house flying through the air because it was windy day. No, that was enough. Look, if I'm going to be injured in a bouncy house, I want it to be because the wind has picked the entire house up and like blew it down the street. That would be fun. Number three on our list of most amazing things made with air, the water blob. The what? The you water said air, blob. That's water. What is this? The water blob is that thing. You know the thing out in the water, <laughs> the big like um, inflatable mattress of thing where people jump onto it to make to send their their buddy like flying into the water. That's so you, a trampoline. No, no, you sit on a bit. You sit on a big inflatable oh, thing. So you sit I on this side. This about. guy it's jumps like a big, uh, um, and it pushes. It's like a big bladder. Yes, an animal bladder, a, a blue whale animal bladder. Okay, so the water blob. Now you might be saying, why don't you just call it an inflatable like like tr like catapult or whatever? Because it's an official name. 
It's like Kleenex. So it's called or like the water slip and slide. Like slip and slide. I didn't know that was. Is that a trademark? Yeah. See, exactly like that then, except bigger and not flat. So, okay, so the water blob was invented by a guy, a guy in Texas named Tex. Come on, <laughs> seriously? Texan. Hey, Tex. That's who, funny. Who used army surplus fuel bladders. People love bladders. <laughs> <laughs> See? See, she literally laughs. laughs. Not even at a fart joke, at a bladder joke. This bathroom still counts. So an army surplus fuel bladder as a waterfront toy. A guy named Spike White, come on, who's making up these names? Falls in love with the idea, brings it to the creators, who now who are now the original American-made high-flying water inflatable, also known as the water blob. For the record, there's a classic blob and a weekender blob. You can look into those. That's funny. Did does it? Did you find out how they actually came out with the idea? No, I did not. Do not know. I just I got stuck on the Tex in Texas. Thing. I think I think I might know. Oh, it probably stemmed from an air mattress. Oh yes. I Have know. you ever had an air mattress on the floor and then right over the course of the day or the night it starts to go down a little bit? Wait and a then... minute. Question. Has anybody not had a mattress that did that? <laughs> An air mattress. That's right? why it's not on this list because it's not the most amazing. It literally it, doesn't it even hold worst. air. Never holds air. Well, see, and then if you sit on the one side, you're fine. You're almost on the ground. But then if somebody comes over and sits on the other side, pushes you up. <laughs> That's probably what happens. Right? I bet you more people get injured on this thing than the bouncy house. Probably not, actually, because there's water. Number two, though, number two on the most amazing things made with air, the air dancers. The wacky, you know those, those guys, arm dude. Yeah, those guys that are like always waving yeah, around. Yeah. Okay, so Peter Minchel, again, I'm going to give these people credits because they're cool. He was an artist from Trinidad and Tobago. He comes up with the concept for the 1996 Summer Olympics. So these things have only been kind of around in their okay. regular form since 1996. Okay. So we're talking, what, uh, 25 years. Ooh, 25 years, okay? Time. It was originally invented the, uh, called the Tall Boy, because it's right? okay, okay. tall. But now, look at this. The concept, the concept of an inflatable dancing human-shaped balloon has been officially patented. So all of those ones that look like this guy, but they're maybe a little bit different, different colors, they have that has been licensed to other companies to create and sell those things. But somebody is making money as the patent owner for anybody who looks kind of human doing this, wow. like me. Somebody's making money off this probably. I love those guys. We should we should be ma making money off you doing this, right? Or I, else, why do it? I should go stand outside a store and do that. Here we go. Last one, number one, top five most amazing things made with air. We had the whoopee cushions, the bouncy castles, the water blob, the air dancer, and bubble wrap. Oh, I agree. I like right? that one. Wait, are you gonna say because it's fun to pop? Exactly. Okay. Bubble wrap is also a generic trademark. So any of that that stuff where you where okay. it's got the, the air inside it, we call it bubble wrap. It's not always bubble wrap. That's an actual name for something. In 1957, two inventors were attempting to create three-dimensional plastic wallpaper. That's what it was originally done. Once again, the best ideas come from people having other ideas. So I now Which is funny because they have 3d plastic wall tiles now oh. and you can put them together and make like a feature wall i don't even know if this is available right now but if this ever did get invented after these guys tried it moved it to some other product and someone said that's still a good idea i would this would be would be on the list if i knew that there was um 3d inflatable wallpaper i would have put that on the list so it started off to be this 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 plastic wallpaper the idea failed, and then they realized it could be used for packaging material. And who doesn't, you know, get this stuff out of the thing? It's way better than those, uh, um, what are those little nuts? 
You know those oh, packing, the, those the packing, packing shells. No, oh, those are horrible. Mm -hmm. But this stuff I here. I thought you were gonna say then the pillow pack. Have you ever danced on this stuff before? Now they have pillow packs. Have you ever like danced? Yeah. Like a... It's actually it actually makes really good insulation. Does can it? keep you warm if you uh, go camping a lot. You just bring some bubble wrap and lay it down underneath your air mattress, and it help keep the moisture away. Does it? But does it help keep the air in the mattress? No. No. There's an invention for somebody. So there you go. That's the top five most amazing things made with air. Any thoughts on this list? No. I like number one. The whoopee cushion? Mm -hmm. I didn't, or no, wait. Number I didn't. one or number five? Number two. <laughs> <laughs>Let's take a look at Mary Jane's strain. I like that. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. What's the strain? What's the strain today, Mary Jane? Well, surprise, surprise! Cotton Candy Kush by Delicious Seeds. How in the world you might find a way to blend these I try. things in with the themes? I, I mean, try. I really do. How many strains are there, by the way? Too many. Okay. No, no, I take that back. There's never too many strains. <laughs> never, there can never be too There's many too strains. There's too many to okay. name. Because you've done an amazing job at uh, occasionally being able to blend the strain name with a theme. Thank you. And uh, so clearly there's a lot of choices. Anyways, point Thank is, you. Cotton Candy Kush, talk to us about it. Thank you. Um, Cotton Candy Kush by Delicious Seeds is a hybrid cross between Power Plant and the Lavender strain. So if you've ever had power plant strain before, it is a very, very powerful, high THC. Um, it's a heavy hitter. If you like it, you'll probably like this one as well. I'm a little bit confused by um, the blend of bringing power plant in because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what you know about cotton candy, candy floss, whatever it may be, <laughs> but it is not exactly a powerful snack. In fact, it literally is just sugar and air. <laughs> so uh, not the not the symbol of power. So it's interesting that the power, somebody took power plant and went, mm, let's call it cotton candy. Well, there's a reason why they call it cotton candy, and it's because of the, the aroma that's given from the flowers. So it's a very sweet smelling mm. strain so the power is connected to the high thc because it's a powerful strain yeah thc levels can reach up to 25 percent um cbd wow. under one percent so it is for the more experienced user that would take me to the ground <laughs> um users have experienced and described the following effects happiness relaxation as well as a feeling of euphoria can you give us the side effects? The side effects probably are red eyes and dry mouth. Yes. Or also known as? Cotton mouth. That's right. Or pasties. Yes. Having the pasties. I like how you did that. Pasties. <laughs> uh, the terpenes found in the cotton candy kush strain are myrcene, pinene, and limonene. So it's a nice little blend there. All right, Cotton Candy Kush. Yes. Get it at your local dispensary. No, get it from from Delicious Seeds. Get it from Delicious Seeds. <laughs> newbie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's what that's what the doobies are here for. Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of On the Spot with the newbie and the doobie. Our special guest today is Ross Rebliotti. I've been practicing that all week. Ross, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here on the show. My pleasure. Uh, you know, it's always good to get out of the cave once in a while. <laughs> Where, whereabouts is the cave? Is it an undisclosed location? Are you allowed to give us some sort of details? Yeah, I'm near Penticton on... Uh, Lake Okanagan. Oh, right see. on the yeah, right on the water. Now I am as geography neophyte as you're going to find. Where is that, Ross? It's on maps. <laughs> but, it's in the states. Let me I get my that. phone. It's in the states. <laughs> no, we're actually in um, in British Columbia. Okay. And, oh, okay. Uh, we're about three three hundred kilometers east of Vancouver in the desert. 
Nice. Well, That's I can tell you. It doesn't look like the desert. I've seen some photos. It's really beautiful there. <laughs> it's the desert. Full on. There's cactus and, and scorpions and rattlesnakes. And it's actually the, the Sonora Desert that starts down in Mexico. Wow. See, already, yeah. already we're learning stuff we didn't know we were going to learn. You are a, you're a fascinating <laughs> guest all off the top. Sorry, guys. I don't no. know. That's no, great. It's all good. Really, the point of this the show, as much as we we have a cannabis base and we're going to talk about um, cannabis and your your life in regards to that as well. But I'm, I'm a newbie. I'm not even a consumer. I tried it three times. It ruined my bowling game. Some things weren't worth risking. So um, <laughs> yeah. really, the point of the show is to to talk about cannabis, but really to get to hear the stories and know the people behind it. So Anything you say on this, if you think it's a tangent, it's probably gold and pun Sweet. attended. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I, I love to go off on tangents. That's awesome. You have to remind me what the question is sometimes. Fair enough. We'll we'll make sure we ask it at least twice. So, Ross, um, I think the first thing that needs to be pointed out is we all know you, and I'm sure you know, you've had a lifetime of this now, 1998. Um, does it ever get old? Do you ever go, man, why am I known for, you know, Ross Gold? Like the, the, that can't get ever get old. old. No, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm getting on in, in years, but it's, it's a fun story. Uh, you know, um, it's easier to talk about now than it was. Right. Um, I'll give you that for sure. Um, you know, I went through a period of time that, you know, where there was a lot of ups and downs and um, kind of coming to terms with what it's like to have normal people just walking down the street know who you are. And that, you know, so there was that whole thing. But over time, right, like it's been uh, nearly 24 years and I've, I've adapted to it and I also don't like, put myself out there as much as I used to, as far as, you know, that, that sort of thing, like showing up at house parties. I don't, you know, I'm not doing that as much. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been a learning experience, but definitely something, um, you know, I find, you know, it's fun to talk about it. Do you, is that something like, obviously your story connected to winning the gold, having it stripped, all of that creates a narrative that, Usually, if you win a gold, it's just you win the gold and everybody's like, yeah, it's gold better. And yours has this narrative that has, you know, becomes a life of its own, becomes bigger. Um, do, does does that story tarnish the fact very few people have won a gold in anything in Olympics in the history of world? Do, does does it does it have a negative side to it or can you still really embrace the fact that you've got a gold medal? Oh, I guess in the beginning there was there was both, right? Um, you know, I could see, that, you know, that there was positive, you know, there was, it started a conversation about cannabis that I was really hopeful about. And I knew that I, I was, I was given a platform where I could, you know, be that guy to, you know, carry the cannabis torch, you know, and, um, and at the same time, I knew I was going to be faced with adversity and discrimination and stereotype and stigma and travel bans and getting on the no fly list after 9-11 and still being on it today. And, um, wow. You know, the whole kit and caboodle, like it, the 24, 48 hours after my win was an example of what the last 24 years have been like. Um, I won. And the next day I was in jail. Like I wasn't just an athlete that lost a medal. Like they actually had me in jail. And if I didn't win uh, in the court of arbitration, then they were continuing to process me, right? Hmm. So after I came home, it was like the same thing. It was kind of like, okay, I got this like gold medal. It's like a university degree. Like it doesn't automatically mean that you just pull the thing and money comes out. Right. And um, so it was... It, it came with a, you know, it was, there was a lot of corporate pushback. There was a lot of support for me privately. Like I had people confiding in me that, you know, oh, they, they smoke joints or like a judge or a high up guy in, in corporate world will, oh yeah, we, 
me and my buddies or whatever. But at the end of the day, like they they would never be able to get behind me as a company, you know, and mm. and you know, as far as coaching and being around the kids and stuff in those days too it was touchy. And so I wasn't able to um really pursue like coaching and and whatnot. Not not to mention the travel ban right in two thousand and one. Um, from 9-11, you know, right when the X Games was starting, I was like slotted in like for sure to, you know, compete uh, in the border cross and and just continue my career. I was 26, right, at the time. So there was just a lot of like things like that that I had to sort of face, not to mention being like super well known and having to well, I didn't have to, but I felt like I had to project a certain amount of positivity and, and success in some way. Like, even though I wasn't able to like earn a living, um, I felt those pressures that, you know, if I didn't, that I would just be like another, you know, guy washed up guy, you know, sort of thing. And with, you know, and so there was a lot of like these things that just were weighing on me just as a person that I don't even know if they really existed in real life. You know, it, it's, it's only how you see the situation at the time. Right. But as we've seen legalization, like, and getting closer and closer to, you know, what the dream is as far as, you know, cannabis coming in to our lives as a normal substance and totally destigmatized. Um, you know, we saw that conversation start in 98 around the kitchen table i had kids and all across the country do projects on me in school when they were in you know elementary school right through to university and to this day i do interviews for university students that are doing um different whatever i don't even know what they're doing and um yeah and and you know but the it's changed the conversation and it's gotten to the point where you know, in 2013, we launched a cannabis brand, Ross's Gold. Um, in 2015 or 16, 17, somewhere in there, we opened the Ross Gold um, dispensary in Kelowna. Uh, we won Best Dispensary in BC two times by Leafly um, out of Seattle. And, um, you know, we had Ian Adamansing come to the store and do a special on, on the national uh tsn did a special documentary on on myself in the store called higher ground it's definitely worth a watch and um you know we've and that was pre-legalization right that was mm. during prohibition and and um i really wanted to be not just somebody who's like talking the talk right like oh anybody can get behind cannabis like tommy chong for example was in jail for the whole time he was doing that 70s show and for having glass, for having a line of bonks in the States. Wow. And just so you know what I did, literally the same month that he was released from prison after like five years or something for having glass, I launched my glass. And so I'm like, okay, here, here we go. Like, what are they going to do? What's going to happen? I don't know. It's not America. I'm in Canada. But still, and then I, I put my name on the store, right? And all over the inside of the store and pictures of me, you know, racing and, and uh, you, you know, TVs, YouTubing, like all different like videos of me, like doing all different sports or whatever. Mm. Just kind of showing like what a beautiful store could look like in the future. And then, you know, we saw legalization coming, um, you know, when Trudeau was running and mm -hmm. we, we, shut down two years before legalization like we didn't have any issues with you know we had city council we had the fire chief we had the police chief we had everybody go through the store just like a normal retail store that you have to do that those sorts of things and um no problems and so when legalization came we shut her down uh, over a year before and we've just been as a company sort of weathering the storm, like not too many companies have to go through a period of prohibition and then federal legalization. And like, mm -hmm. so this is a, this is a definite, you know, was a kind of a, not so much a showstopper because, you know, we were, I was doing lots and lots of 
these sorts of things over the years and, and continue to do so. And so it just keeps lending itself to, you know, more, more fun and, and getting to know and making more connections in the industry and, and getting to know like who the people are and, and when we're able to launch, which we're actually, I'm literally just doing a deal with a micro who's asked me to come in and take over their growing operation and start producing for Ross gold. Nice. Um, we've got new merchandise just about to hit the nice the airways. This is a nice, um, a nice pipe and it comes in a, in a sweet little recycled paper, like drawer box, like, uh, a jewelry box with a cool with the cool Ross Gold embossed on the uh that's on awesome. it anyways. That's nice. Right I like that through. your product so testing too. To, yeah. <laughs> right. So we're it's just all happening and, and it all stems from this crazy uh thing that happened to me, you know, twenty four years ago. It's funny when you're talking and I, I definitely can't compare my situation fully to yours. I think yours is on a bigger scale, but um, when you're talking about the stigma attached that, you know, you know, as soon as cannabis was attached to you and that there were people that are like, Hey, normally we would connect with a gold medal winner, but we can't because of cannabis. And, and even though we smoke it, we can't tell people we did. And so we can't support you. Mm -hmm. Like I, we've been telling people on this show recently, um, in my own journey, that that stigma, which was on you, 1998, 99, 2000, all that type of thing, even though legalization has happened, that stigma is, is still solid because I'm feeling at the moment I came from a, uh, a religious background. I grew up through the church. Um, when I went in to perform full time comedy, um, I was l doing a lot of shows in churches. I was listed as a, a Christian comic. Um, all of those things were attached. And as as I moved away from from that world and as I entered into this one and saw that there were functional people like Mary Jane um, and I started to learn a whole lot and I was on my own explorative journey. When we started this podcast, um, I think people would be amazed to hear how many friends, um, fans, relatives, supporters, people who used to book me um, have I don't even consume. I'm just talking about it positively on an advocate side, having the conversation and I'm already getting those cutoffs. And I'm amazed to see when COVID finally releases me to start to perform again. And I finally see the full damage of people who used to book me regularly who now won't. It's just when I hear you tell that story, I'm like all these years later, even with legalization, um, someone just deciding that they're going to advocate on behalf of cannabis, um, that stigma is still so deeply rooted and it's, it's disheartening. I didn't know that from the other side mm -hmm. until I stepped into it. And then I was like, oh my goodness, what was, what's been happening all these years? Yeah. They treat us like we're criminals, like we're doing something terrible. And honestly, yeah, Ross, and I didn't, yeah. I didn't find out about you until, um, after you launched your glass line because I was like one of those teenagers. I was off in my own little world. I was busy smoking weed and hanging out with the boys. And then I got a job at a glass store or a head shop as they used to call them. And your products hit the shelves. And I was like, what is this? First of all, beautiful, like right down to the the logo and the, the gold color. I was like, what is this? I gotta find out more. Like, why is this Ross Gold? And um, I was like, wait a minute. They thought that he like cannabis is a drug in like a, a performance enhancing drug but everything they told us our whole lives it slows people down it makes you lazy dude give him two gold medals <laughs> because he won a gold medal with cannabis in his system i was like i none of that made sense to me like right. i it's like okay this this is yeah there's a lot of stuff in cannabis culture that yeah you mm. should have gotten to in my opinion <laughs> It was definitely a double win. Like I had to win it again back. Like I lost my first my first two appeals, right, and then mm -hmm. went to the court of arbitration. So I literally did win it twice. Um, but yeah, I I got a medal from Italy. Actually, gave me a medal, and um, being that I you know I have some Italian heritage, and um, I actually got it tattooed on my on my hand. Oh, nice. Well, it is that time again. Time for a smoke. 
No, unfortunately, it's time for us to say goodbye. Okay. Well, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. And we'd like to encourage you to please check out our Patreon account. Become a patron for a little bit of money every month. You can get a chance to help support what we're doing here and, and the things that we want to not just to where we want to go, but what we want to grow. And that will help us do that. Also, though, you will have access to the full interviews of the guests that we have on this show. So you hear partial of those interviews on our episodes, but you can hear those full interviews over on our Patreon account, as well as um, some other bonus extras are available there. So please check us out at uh, Patreon uh, at The Newbie and The Doobie. And feel free to connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at The Newbie and The Doobie. And of course, you're going to want to subscribe to our YouTube channel and your favorite podcatcher um, and push those little notification buttons because there are little things hidden in there. Just because you subscribe doesn't necessarily mean you get the notification that a new episode is up. And uh, we want you to be able to keep up to date with the things that we're doing in our and every episode that comes out. So uh, YouTube and at your favorite podcatcher at the newbie and the doobie subscribe today. And while you're there, don't forget to share with your friends and family regardless of whether they're a newbie or a doobie. And with this, I close. The Newbie and the Doobie is a weekly podcast. So until we see you next week, please remember, stay lifted and keep on laughing. Cheers. Cheers.